Hi guys, Office Bloke Dave here. Hope you're all doing great out there today. I'm doing all right. I'm just sweaty and so hot you won't believe. It is uh, like 30 odd degrees outside. This is 10 o'clock at night, bear in mind. And it's just chucked it down, lightning, storm, thunder, all that sort of stuff. It's so humid, it is unbelievable. So yeah, if I look a little bit shiny, then uh, that is why. That is exactly why. But anyway, we're going to check out a new video from Rockfeed, which is uh, becoming one of my go-to channels for getting back into sort of uh, rock news, rock and metal news and things like that. And uh, yeah, the, this video is called Kirk Hammett's Emotional Story About Joey Jordison and Metallica. I um, think I know what this is. Before I say what it is, or what I think it is, make sure you subscribe. But um, I was at Download years and years and years ago. I can't remember what year it was, but 2003, 2004, 2005-ish, that, that sort of time. And um, Metallica came on really, really late as the headlining band. And it turned out Lars, there was something wrong with him. There's been loads of speculation over the years about what it was. Some people say drugs. Some people say it was panic attacks and all types of things. But um, people stood in for Lars and it ended up being absolutely amazing. Uh, one of the people who stood in for him was Joey Jordison. So if that is what he's going to talk about, I was there. I was literally in the crowd as it was happening. Um, yeah, so we're going to check it out and we're going to see if it is. Let's do it. Still hard to believe that Joey Jordison is no longer with us, one of the all-time great metal drummers and such an important part of Slipknot's history. What a great way to remember him with this new interview with Kirk Hammett of Metallica, talking about how Joey came through like only he could, saving the day for the band at a moment where they really needed it, and how he could tell just how much that personally meant to Joey Jordison. This is something new we've never heard before. It's very powerful. Here's more. Before we continue, I would really appreciate it if you're new to Rockfeed, if you took a quick moment to hit that subscribe button for the latest rock news and updates. And also, time is running out for one lucky winner to enter to win for four VIP weekend passes to one of these festivals of your choosing. You could go see Guns N' Roses, Avenged Sevenfold, Limp Biscuit, Slipknot. The possibilities are endless, and I feel like you have a good chance of winning, but time is running out, and you've got to enter to win at the link in the description. So in June 2004, Metallica were gearing up to perform the Download Festival when they learned that their drummer Lars Ulrich would not be making the performance. And this was attributed to exhaustion at the time, but it was a very short time before the show. So Metallica had two options, find a replacement backstage or cancel this performance that they flew to the other side of the world. I can't remember who was playing drums for Slayer at the time, if it was Dave Lombardo or Paul Bostaff, but I'm pretty sure one of them filled in as well, because it wasn't just Joey for the whole set, it was, it was multiple drummers that came on a long time ago though now. To make happen. So what they did was scour backstage, they ran into Dimebag Daryl backstage, and Kirk recounts this madness in this situation but he talked about a beautiful moment with Joey Jordison, a person who grew up loving that band. Early on in Slipknot's career, this was 2004, getting the chance of a lifetime to perform with one of the biggest bands of all time. Again, a band he surely grew up idolizing. Here's more. Just before we get into it, that was the year Damage Plan played. That's why Dimebag and Viddy were there. And uh, that was main stage. Middle of the day, maybe like three, four in the afternoon. And... Uh, it was absolutely nuts. The only time in my life I ever got to see Dan Bagdara live. I had tickets for the Tattoo the Planet tour and then literally September the 11th happened. I think I was supposed to see Pantera on September the 12th or September the 13th or something and flights got grounded. Um, obviously split up afterwards, but I got to see Damage Plan, thankfully, and it was at this exact same festival. Speaking with The Guardian about the history of the Download Festival, Hammett said, I couldn't do anything for the next three hours except talk to drummers. I remember seeing Dimebag wave at me from the distance backstage. I looked at him in mouth, we are completely fucked. He came over and laughed and just said, you guys have this, and that was the last time I saw Dime. I still regret not taking the time to have a full conversation with him. Shit. He said, Joey could play all sorts of things. I remember saying to him, bro, you're going to have to play a bunch of these tunes tonight. 
He was beside himself. He was so happy. At the end of the set, I turned to Joey on stage and I asked him if he could play Inner Sandman. And I saw through his mask while he was performing that he had tears in both of his eyes. He was crying because it meant so much to him to be playing Sandman with us at Download. I will never forget that. Jordison reflected on that performance years later in an interview saying, as cool as it was playing that show, what was cooler was playing in Metallica's practice room. It was just me and those guys just warming up. What a dream come true, man. I'll have dreams about it every once in a while. It was one of the best gigs of my life. Corey Taylor also reflected on that moment in an interview a few years ago. He said, we were back there with Joey watching it. It was surreal to watch Joey playing with Metallica because we all grew up listening to them and Joey was shitting bricks. I mean, he had his mask on, but every time he'd come back and he would pull his mask off, he would just be like, how am I doing? How am I doing? I'm like, you're fucking killing it. Me, Paul, Clown, we were all standing there fucking cheering him on. And then they ended up throwing different songs at him that they hadn't rehearsed. They threw all the misfit shit at him and he fucking knew it. They would have probably kept him up there all night if they could have. He played the majority of the set. That to me was an amazing moment for him and it was cool to be back there sharing that with him. It was a special little fucking, almost like the moment you knew you've made it. You're seeing this reflection of respect from arguably your biggest influence, your biggest peer, them signing off on you like you've been fucking massive for him. And I remember him telling me it was such a blur that he didn't remember anything until he watched the video back. And he's right. That shit can go by very quickly because you're so into it. I don't know if they expected it, but he went in there and he showed not only the band, but all of their fans, not only the level of respect that we have for them and their music, but that we can hold our own. And that was a big moment. It was a big part of that. And of course, sadly, Joey Jordison passed away in July of 2021 at just the age of 46. His legacy continues to live on as one of the greatest metal drummers to ever do it. So incredibly influential and just what a beautiful story it is to see, to hear Kirk talking about him shedding those tears and how much it meant to him being up there with a band he grew up idolizing. Just truly a special moment and Joey's legacy will undoubtedly live on forever. That's your latest update from Rockfeed. Be sure to subscribe. Nice. I wasn't aware of that interview that Kirk had done talking about that. Like I say, I was there that year and it's kind of chaos at a festival, you know, when, when there's some sort of changes and you don't know, like bands cancel. I saw Metallica at Download one year when it was a secret set and they were just on the second stage in the middle of the day and you just never know what's going to happen. Like these things sort of go crazy. But yeah, it was uh, it was pretty special in hindsight. I do think that whoever was drumming for Slayer at the time drummed for Metallica as well. Um, in fact, I might have a quick Google of it now while we're here, just to see if I'm right. Who drummed for Metallica at... So yeah, Joey Jordison, Slayer's Dave Lombardo, there you go. And then Lars Ulrich's own drum tech. There you go, I was right. For a change, I was actually right about something. Anyway, that's, uh, it is touching that. It's, when you think back and it's like, Paul from Slipknot, no longer with us. Joey from Slipknot, no longer with us. Dimebag, no longer with us. They didn't mention Vinnie Paul in the story, but obviously he would have been there um, with Dime backstage at that point. It's, uh, it's crazy, it's crazy. Anyway, without getting morbid about it, let's uh, let's crack on. Interesting. Let me know what you guys thought of that. Um, if you were there, especially, let me know in the comment section. I'd love to hear other people's perspective of it as well. And yeah, I'll see you again soon, guys. Cheers.